Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan, and the game we're going to talk about today is Star Wars Rebel Assault for the PC. So the first time I actually played this game was in 1995, about two years after it was released. Because over the summer of 1995, I played a lot of X-Wing and TIE Fighter, and I was looking at this Rebel Assault game, and it was advertised as an arcade experience. And I was like, well, don't we already have the Star Wars arcade? Yeah, like the Atari one and the recent Sega one? So during my freshman year of high school, I actually took the bus to Egghead Software, if you remember Egghead Software, and I purchased Star Wars Rebel Assault for about 30 bucks with my own allowance. Yeah, I saved up quite a bit of money mowing those lawns. And vacuuming those floors. And dusting those cobwebs. Yeah. I was a pretty filthy kid just to get my filthy money. Well, since they advertise this as a arcade experience, I was hoping to get that same feeling when I played the Atari Star Wars arcade game and the recent Sega release of the arcade games. But hey, this one was actually completely different. Like, this is the first game of Star Wars I played that used music from the actual movies! Which I can't play here because of Content ID, but hey, I'm using the Super Nintendo versions, which sound pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Even though it was cool that they used the original music from the Star Wars movies, it kind of lacked the charm of the original tunes they made for X-Wing and TIE Fighter. But still, it was really cool to hear the original music from the original movies. Although, the problem was, there wasn't a lot of variety in it. For example, being the massive Star Wars nerd that I am, like, during the Hoth levels, they're playing Episode 4 music. Like, where's the Imperial theme? Like, where's the music that plays during the Snowspeeder? Yeah, it kind of bugged me that they kept repeating the same music from A New Hope, like, in almost every single level. All right, now let's talk about the gameplay. So the gameplay is a lot more of an on-rail shooter rather than an arcade experience. Like you're playing on pre-rendered backgrounds, well, pre-rendered movie type backgrounds, which looked pretty good back in the day, but by today's standard, they're pretty grainy. And you play as Rookie One, AKA not Luke Skywalker, as you're a member of the Rebel Alliance, ready to stop the Empire as not Luke Skywalker. So if you thought X-Wing and TIE Fighter were tough, this game is really, really tough. Like, really, really, really tough. Because back then, you can only play this game with the mouse and keyboard. And a lot of the times, I felt that the controls were very, very loose. Like, every time I would kind of move the mouse, like right or left, I would really go to the left or right. And I would end up bumping into walls all the time. But it took a bit of practice to, you know, just kind of get the mouse movements right. Although the controls are still far from perfect. And like the graphics, yeah, obviously, like I said before, they're very, very grainy, but they do kind of give you a bit of that, you know, cartoony Star Wars look from X-Wing and TIE Fighter, but kind of a little more realistic. And I kind of feel that it loses a bit of the charm. And I think they really should have went with the more cartoony style of X-Wing and TIE Fighter and then just use like the moving motion backgrounds, movie backgrounds for, you know, the levels. And even though the game is difficult, at least the game gives you passwords, but I do remember back in the day, like, you know, the mid-90s, like, like, LucasArts, if you call them, like, you know, you call their gaming hotline, like, they're only gonna give you, like, maybe four passwords to, like, you know, one-third of the game each, which really sucks, but then I had to wait till I had online access before I could find out the passwords to the rest of the levels. And yeah, the levels are definitely very difficult, like I said before. Like, you have to have, like, precision mouse movements in order to not get hit by shit. And then you have to also shoot shit, too. At least they give you, like, cursors to indicate where you need to shoot. So you go through Tatooine, and then you go into space. You 
completely destroy a Star Destroyer, which is really cool. Although the Star Destroyer looks very, very grainy. But then you go back to Tatooine where the Empire attacks her base. And then like the guy at the stage is like, Aah! and then after that, you go to Hoth, which, okay, that's pretty cool. But they're, like I said before, they're playing the wrong music. I want to hear the Empire Strikes Back music. I am a Star Wars nerd. And also, one thing I really dislike about this game is there's a lot of parts in the game where you kind of have to choose a path. And if you choose the wrong path, like, you could end up going around in circles. Like, before you leave, like, Yavin or the Hoth Cave, like, you have to choose the right path or you're gonna get stuck. You're gonna keep going around in circles. And of course, the last part of the game is the Death Star, which is really, really cool. Like, I enjoyed the Death Star in X-Wing, although it looked very blocky. But the Death Star in Rebel Assault looks pretty cool, although it's a bit grainy. And you actually have several levels on the Death Star, rather than just, you know, the surface and then the trench. Like, yeah, you have a level before you get to the Death Star, and then you have, the, you know, the surface, and then you have another surface level, which is really cool. Then you have the trench, and after that, you fire your photon torpedoes as not Luke Skywalker, and then you celebrate at the end like episode 4. Although they did a really good job of taking Chewie and Han Solo out. Yeah, so Rookie One is the only one walking to receive his medal. Yeah, so Star Wars Rebel Assault, the so-called arcade experience type game, which is more of an on-rail shooter type game, has it aged well? Kinda yes and no. Like, obviously, the graphics are very, very outdated. Like, this is like early 90s CD-ROM graphics. But back then, man, this was state-of-the-art. So if you want to get this game, the good news is you can actually get this game on GOG.com for a very, very cheap price. I actually got it during the Star Wars sale when Episode 7 came out, you know, The Force Awakens, and I got it for pretty cheap. I think I got it for about, like, five bucks. But regardless of its age and its graphics and its gameplay, I still highly recommend this game since it's a bit of a look into the Star Wars gaming history, like when they started using more full motion video and music from the movie. All right, so that ends this episode of Awesome Video Game Memories about Star Wars Rebel Assault for the PC. And if you have any memories about this game, make sure to leave those in the comments. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can follow me on Twitter at ThatRyanMolina and you can send me some game suggestions there or just chat with me. And you can also follow our main show account at BattleGeekPlus2. And if you want to see me and the BattleGeekPlus crew play games live, you can follow us at twitch.tv slash BattleGeekPlus or here on YouTube Gaming. Alright, so take care and may the Force be with you. Hey, you guys having fun here? Well, help support our efforts at patreon.com slash BattleGeekPlus.